Welcome to the Michigan Travel Show, a kaleidoscope of stories about the people, places, and events that shape our great state. I'm Jack Berry, and I'm here at the beautiful Boyne Mountain Resort with Steve Kircher, who is the president of Boyne USA's Eastern Operation, which is a, a pretty, pretty good mouthful and a pretty big operation. Stephen, good to see you. Likewise, Jack. Now, you're very much involved in the, in the golf side of the business, a good golfer yourself, and uh, you've grown up in it here at Boyne. And uh, now, what? how do you see the golf business now, especially in the state of Michigan? Well, obviously, we've gone through a 10-year recession in the state of Michigan, and, and I think uh, all of us have you know, adjusted our, our business models accordingly. And, and in the last, you know, in the last downturn, if you will, last two years, which obviously put more pressure on the resort business, um, we have started to see the benefits of, of all of us collectively working together. The Pure Michigan campaign in particular is an example of that. And ironically, the golf side of the business is starting to, in the last two years for us. Uh, had strong double-digit gains, which is surprising, um, but we think it's the beginning of a recovery of in, in the change in the business model that I think the state's going to be you know, experiencing, a, a reinvention, if you will, of, of tourism. Now, are you seeing a lot of people coming in from out of state? M many more from out of state than ever before, and that is, uh, you know, in part, Pure Michigan, I think Big Break had uh, our uh, the big big break program we had at the Highlands had an impact, I think, on getting some national recognition. Uh, Bay Harbor getting the gold medal has been a real plus um, with Golf Magazine. So we're we're getting some national recognition that we maybe hadn't had for a while. Um, so the spotlight's a bit on on the area. Um, so we're seeing growth, and I think that the demographics on a macro scale are good for for golf. There's a lot of people. Uh, Kids are going to college, and they're going to get back into the sport. So I think the next 10 years, from a macro perspective, is going to be better than it's been the last 10 years, and maybe a growth period. Um, and then if Michigan continue to work on promoting itself and reinventing itself like it is, I think we're, we're you know, we could be in a slow growth period again. Um, I'm not saying boom times like the 80s, but uh, you know, I think for the quality of life of Michigan and, and outdoor recreation, having uh, slow growth would be a very welcome uh, event for, for the state. Well, you have such a beautiful operation here, both here and at the Highlands, and uh, it's just about as pretty a spot on earth as you can find. And you've been, like your dad, very hands-on in this. I remember uh, you and your dad on the monument going around and, and uh, and working on that, and then uh, walking around with you and Art Hills over at Bay Harbor, and you get a kick out of that. I, I miss those days. I, I you know go back to the, the growth years of building golf courses. I was thinking about that the other day. It, it, it's a very creative outlet when you're when you're building a golf course. You know, obviously, getting involved in renovations and stuff is is helps you get that still out. But it was it was a great period of time and working with Art Hills and, and people like that, and and my father obviously with his. Uh, vision and, and, and uh, knowledge. It was a great great way to grow into adulthood. Yeah. And nobody has more golf courses than you, right? <laughs> well, we've got a bunch of them. 11, 11 across the U.S. and uh, eight and a half here in Michigan. So it's, it's, a, you know, a, it's a big part of our business, not a huge part of our business, but it's an important part. Now you can uh, you get a lot more people on a ski hill than you do on a golf course. How does, how does the, the operation uh, translate into each other? Oh, I mean, I think our green fees revenue is only about 4% of our total revenue right now um, as a company. Um, we have about a, a half a million, uh, 400,000 visitors that, that frequent the golf courses nationwide. Um, and, you know, skiing visits is, you know, five, six, seven times that. Right. Well, you've got a nice course out there at the Big Sky too, right? The Arnold Palmer course. Arnold Palmer, yeah, it's one of his early ones. It's not, uh, not, not a world-class golf course, but but a beautiful experience and uh, in good shape. And our New England courses are our uh, top in New England, Sugarloaf and Thunder River, both I think are one and two in Maine, and and uh, maybe number one in resort golf in New England. So we've got some really good experiences out there as well, and and we've brought a lot of uh, our. You know, know-how and, and uh, golf knowledge to New England. It's been a lot of fun to see them flourish out there as well, and they're seeing some growth as well. 
Well, you've done real well with uh, with the uh, golf week. I remember you were one of the first ones with the ski weeks, and, and now you've had the golf weeks up here and uh, incredible prices. And how is that going? The packaging, you know, not just that, but the, a, a value package that really gives people the you know uh, depth of what we have to offer. And, and we're we're rolling out a what are you up for package in the next month, will which will be a one price that covers everything if you want to be. On the golf courses, you want to go skiing in the wintertime, you want to be in the spas, you want to take a zip line, you want to go horseback riding, you want to take a, uh, you know, a, a dog sled ride, you can, you can, you know, food's included, everything's going to be included in this package. So we're really excited about, you know, all the things we can offer family or individuals when they come up here. Now, do you ever get a chance to play golf anymore? I think I'm at 11 rounds at midsummer right now. I've taken 32 days off, uh, so I... I'm a little lighter than I used to be, but uh, having three kids and a, and a business, and uh, you know, you gotta you gotta stay focused. But I do, I love the game, and uh, I play a little bit. Are the kids into golf? They're getting into it. They're taking you know golf lessons about every uh, twice a week right now. They're you know ten, nine, eight, you know three. So we're just transitioning them into golf. Skiing and snowboarding is a lot easier to get kids uh, <laughs> enthused about when they're in their single digits. It's interesting seeing that, that difference. But well, uh, I know Scott Hebert, who's uh, many, many times Michigan Open champion down at Grand Traverse, and uh, his his son is not into golf. He's into snowboarding. <laughs> I, well, I like to hear that, but uh, I like to have him in golf as well. But it, it happens. It happens. I think kids kids you know when they get in there maybe uh, early teens or or you know 10 11 12 the muscle i, I think uh, mature enough to, to start enjoying golf um i know with my kids at, at seven eight if they're not you know they're kind of built like myself and it's it's tough for them to to you know <laughs> stay focused on it first off golf takes a little bit of patience and focus whereas snowboarding and skiing it's it's instant fun uh once you get past that first day and uh, kids like speed and, and independence, and, and that's what uh, skiing and snowboarding give them. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about you were uh, uh, heavily involved in the Pure Michigan campaign. How, how did that come about? And, and uh, it's been uh, uh, very well received, I think, about all over the country. Well, we were obviously, you know, involved in helping to get uh, awareness that we needed to come together and, and uh, the state did, a, I think, a fantastic job along with uh, the Michigan Lodging Association in, in really pushing forward on a unified effort. And uh, they've got a world-class uh, ad campaign that has, has won awards, and, and we finally got it ourselves marketed outside the state of Michigan. And we've been telling each other, you know, for 25 years how great we are, but, you know, until we told the outside world and showed images of, of what we all love, it really didn't start to take root. And that's happened the last three years. Definitely it's working and it's re-imaging the state, not just for tourism, but for the whole concept of why you'd want to bring a business to Michigan right. and, and take advantage of, you know, all the great things we have and the recreation is, a, is part of the quality of life. So I think it has a multiple uh, prong reason to do it. And now uh, I mean, we've had beautiful days up here for the Tournament of Champions and it's a uh, typical whereas you know in Arizona they're over 100 degrees they're not playing golf out there Absolutely and in not. Florida and, and uh, we don't have any oil on the beach either. Our <laughs> waters are clean uh, you know I, I got a, uh, somebody staying in my house from North Carolina and they said they've never you know they, they hardly ever swim in North Carolina because all of the the lakes are muddy you know they're, yeah. they're, you, you can't see the bottom so and we have a lot of assets here that are uh, Clearly, you know, when people get here, they're they're enlightened, and uh, that Pure Michigan campaign is enlightening a lot of people about why we love Michigan, and uh, uh, I think it's going to have a real positive impact on, on again multiple levels. Terrific. We've been talking with uh, Stephen Kircher, who is the president of Boyne USA's Eastern Operations. Thanks so much, Steve. That was Thank terrific. You. Great. Yeah.